fighting out of the blue corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 34 wins and seven losses. He stands 170 centimeters tall and weighs 70.1 kilos, representing Guram Fight Club and fighting out of Tbilisi, Georgia, presenting the challenger, Raul Tutarahuli. Introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. This man is a mixed martial artist with a professional record of 21 wins, three losses and one no contest. He stands 178 centimeters tall and weighs in at 70.3 kilo, representing Sport Club Ilas and fighting out of Kyrgyzstan, presenting the reigning, defending, undisputed Brave Combat Federation lightweight champion of the world, Abdi Salam Ulu Omok Kuban each back. Your referee in charge of the action is Mr. Deki the Bandit Larkin. Gentlemen, you've been over the rules. Listen to my instructions at all times. Obey my commands at all times. If I tell you stop, you stop. Any questions from the challenger? Any questions from the champion? If you want to touch gloves, do it. Let's get this done. Big thanks to our sponsor, 8TKO.TV. Again, big thanks to 8TKO.TV. Tail of the tape, close in age. A little bit of a height edge to Abdi Salam Kubinichbek. Wait very close. Reach, slight reach to the champion. And the record, you can make an argument either way. This is for all the marbles, the, the seemingly indestructible Abdi Salam Ulo Kubanichbek taking on what I believe is going to be one of the toughest tests of his career in Raul Tutarali. Big shots from Tutarali. Omok trying to find that big uppercut and the clenching straight off the bat you can see that Tatu Rauli is a natural 66 kilo fighter Come. what we're looking at here brave nation is nothing less than the evolution of mixed martial arts it began in Brazil came to life in the United States of America huge Russian influence now we've got two huge influences from Central Asia and also oh look at that and also from Georgia the scary thing is, every time we see Umok in the Brave Arena, he has developed a new wrinkle to his game. He has evolved. We're also seeing, seeing him, right now, we're seeing him getting touched a little bit more than I'm used to this early in the fight. Well, Raul is a forward, forward pressure fighter. You see with that slightly more diminutive frame, he's trying to roll underneath the shots of Omok and land his own big shot over the top. Raul is seeing something that Omok's opponents haven't yet. He's managing to touch, not, not with proper timing yet, but, but he's, he's, managing to touch, he's managing to touch his opponent. Oh, beautiful shot, just pops out of the pocket. Omok showing why he is, oh! Got wobbled a little bit there. Expect to see Omok level change and get in those hips before too long. That hinge at the hips, if the knee had been coming up, could have been fatal. Nice little pot shot there from Raul. Talk about bad intentions. Look at those hands. Like you say, this is probably the most we've seen Kuban each back get the uh, get Absolutely, clipped. positively. Not getting hit quite yet with rhythm. That's a big shot right there. Momentarily, you've seen a tiny bit of give in the legs of Omok. Oh, might have been an accidental headbutt there. So far, Raul giving an incredible account of himself. He is throwing absolute bombs out there. Cheeky I'm, little uppercut from Kubanich back. Don't know if he can sustain this for all five rounds, but maybe he doesn't believe he has to. Oh, that's beautiful work from the champ. He seems to find his rhythm just a little bit better now.
Uh, you spoke about the resume of Raul as he was walking to the cage, beating some incredible fighters, a double champ in his native Georgia, and essentially completed MMA in Georgia. Ulu may be getting a sense of he's just not used to this style, these quick, quick, short, fully loaded up on shots coming in bunches, but I think he's starting to get a sense of it. Yeah, that was timing. As the hands connected, might try and use the spring of the cage to get the trip. Good defense here from Raul. Fantastic, I did not expect that kind of core strength, that kind of balance. Kubanichbek looking to make a little space to land that knee. Right now, he's been reversed. Tutu Raoli gets a takedown. I am going to have a heart attack. <laughs> Don't do that. I'd have no one to comment here with. Being able to defend the takedown is bound to really do the confidence of Raul Wonders. And now he's the one putting the pressure on. Feels to me like Kubanich Beck is doing a little bit better than he did in the opening minutes of the round. Beautiful slap and reply from Tutorowi. Already a little bit of rending up. Nice job from Raul. Size difference so far. Not really playing much of a factor, Kerrick. Nor, nor is the difference in reach, which surprised me quite a bit. Another beautifully defended takedown. Yeah, you know, on that front head, landed a couple of short knees. Down to short time, Brave Nation, about 20 seconds. Either fight or do something really definitive to put a question or to put a, an exclamation point on the end of the line. Perfect statement. Neither fighter did. Phil, call it. Who do you like in that round? Do you know what? Just for the the volume and the frequency of shots landed, I would be inclined to, to err on the side of Raul. I felt the same way, if only by a tiny little bit. Oh, yeah, it's five margins. It's worth, and it's worth absolutely nothing. We are not the official cage, cage side judges, but your commentators saw a 10 9 for Raul Tudoruli from. Georgia, we're getting a, woo, we're getting That's, a second look at some of that action from round one. I don't in think this we, the main event of Brave Combat Federation '87. I don't think we realize just how cleanly that shot landed, and that speaks to just how supremely well conditioned Umog is. He's a Central Asian fighter. They are beasts. It's a nice, slight overhand right into a leg takedown attempt. It was unsuccessful. As we know, Kirik Abdi Salam Ulu Kubanichbek is one of the most intelligent fighters on the Brave roster. He will have taken the learning that he needs to from that first round, and I believe he will make adaptations to his game. And in he the has, in round. my opinion, Phil, in my opinion, he's got the best endurance. Mm. Cardio for days. He gasses never. Decky the Bandit Larkin getting off any excess water. We are seconds away. Decky doing the same thing to the opponent. Seconds away from round two in this, the main event. Brave Combat Federation 87 in Alkmaar, Netherlands, the city of dreams. Good stiff job to open up from Kubanich back. Starting to put the combinations together now. Kubanich back hasn't been touched so far this round. A little bit different than the opening stanza of round one. I feel like Kubanichbek may have started to get the measure of his opponent. Uh, we know Kubanichbek can go the full five rounds. We saw that when he took on Olyas Iskariev. All the way back at Brave CF 59. That, of course, was for the interim title. Kubanichbek appears to be throwing single shots, Bill, and then fading back a little bit. So what does he need to do? Double up on the shots? Start, yeah, he wants, start putting them wants together. to double up and maybe circle. Back straight up. Your opponent might miss you, especially if he's short. That opponent's got fast, fast Jordan feet. He may come flying in with a hook and land. Oh, beautiful uppercut. Just that hurt. Oh, but then gets tagged with a shot. This is an awesome fight. 
Tuta Raoli doing exactly what you should as the shorter fighter, double up on the jabs, try to fight your way onto the inside. Oh! Nice overhand right, nice jab landing. A much better round for the champ, but then gets caught on the break. Oh, stiff shot from Tuta Raoli. Oh, again, another big shot over the top, predicated off that knee attempt from Kuban Hbeck. Attempted a little step in, crashing elbow. Toroli not using his head movement as he backs up. He's got beautiful head movement moving forward. Seems to shut down as he backs up. Hands connected from Kuban Hbeck. Hands are connected. And there it is, a short, sharp ride on. Kyrgyz Airways. Now, what's he going to do with it? Now, this is where we usually see Kuban Hbeck doing some of his best work. Trying to take the back here. No hooks in as of yet. Tuta Raoli trying to turn it into a takedown of his own. And Tuta Raoli got it right back to where he wants to, moving that head side to side. There are a couple of times shots. A couple of times that Kuban Hbeck has not been far away with that little pot shot uppercut. Kuban Hbeck's got orders from his corner. Do not stand and trade with him the entire round. Completely unknown how that would end up. Get it down on the ground. It's pretty well known how that'll end up. Kuban Hbeck trying to connect those hands. Step number one, the best thing you can get, hands right on the upper hamstring area connected together. If you can't get that, hands around the hips is number two. Multiple great takedown options from there, including lifting him up and twisting him, stepping behind, bringing him to the back, can drop down to various singles, can sweep and reap a leg. Referee Deggy Larkin calling for a little bit more action. A little bit of a steelmate here against the cage wall. No very significant damage being done. Haven't seen a furthering of position, ver vertical position from the champion. Good head positioning here from Raul. Might see Omok change levels, trying to get the takedown here. Oh, fantastic! <laughs> Into a triangle, immediately denied. Beautiful work from Kuban Hbeck. Relatively short time to make something happen with it. He's got a cradle of sorts on the ankle. Trying to take the back, but again... Phenomenal job from Raul. If he could take... Wow, may have been in stages, but he took Kuban Hbeck down. A little bit of an X guard, momentary X guard there. You see that so rarely in mixed martial arts. Got a single hook in. No. Too high. Right now, Kubanese Maybe back just looking needs, for a knee bar. Kubanese back just needs to land some big shots. Trying to, trying to hit an inverted triangle, but doesn't quite have the one arm flush. Both arms are locked in. Feet are connected by only by the toes. More a defensive position right now from Raul on bottom. This is a, an upside down guard, I think it's called. I just made that up. Kubin Hbeck a little stymied, doesn't quite know where to land a, a hard <laughs> shot. I'm not sure I did either. Who did you like in round two? Do you know what? Considerably better round for Kubin Hbeck. I would be inclined to say that we're looking at one apiece right now. There you go, Brave Nation, on our unofficial, very unofficial count. It is 19 to 19, and now we're going to get a look by a Top 10's replay as to why. A couple of shots landing, one barely on the champion. Champion comes back, lands a very nice uppercut. Straight combination, bop, 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 bop. Follows that up with a wrong stepping jab. That was the takedown of the night so far here incredible. at Brave Combat Federation 87. That triangle was completely denied, but again, big props to the Georgian fighter for not ending up in a place where he was getting devastated. He's staying out of serious danger, and he is always putting his opponent in some degree of danger himself. So we liked the champion in that round, but the fighter from Romania, Raul Tutaroli, is 
by no means getting beat up in here. He's got an answer for very nearly everything. And one thing you can say about Georgian fighters is that they are just intrinsically game. They do not stand on ceremony reputation. They come to fight every single time. Got in deep. Beautiful work from yeah. Tutor Raoui. Trying to take the back here. Got one hook in place. Omar bounces right back up, trying to strip that grip of Tutor Raoui. He feels that head move. He may pop back with a little elbow. That's something we've seen him do before. He's got the hands apart. He's going to turn in. There it is. Looking for a switch now. This is grueling for both parties. Back control now from Tutu Rauli. He's able just to, to ride out the scramble. Might want to, there it is. Might want to, I was just going to say, want to see him get that elbow in there. He did. Pop those hands apart. That's a big and shot. That's that uppercut. One of his best combinations, Brave Nation. Starts with that uppercut. Hook follows. Straight follows. Jab follows. Tried it again. And less successful this time. Roll Tutoroli. Tutoroli. Learning from his mistake the last time. You're watching fighters get better on their feet. Fight scheduled for five five minute rounds. Should we need them? And again, uh, we talked about it a couple of times, but under those lights, Carrick, so, so draining. I've got to say, if oh. you were to take two fighters and put them in 150 degrees, my money would be on Kubanich back. Such a supremely conditioned athlete. Nika, there it was. Tutorelli is still giving a great account of himself so far. Neither fighter threw a big combination on that separation. No. I think they're both feeling the third round. They know they've got the championship rounds coming up. Both of them are holding a little bit in reserve right now. That separation without a shot from either side frankly surprised me. See the eye is bloodied up of Kuban each back. I think there might be a little cut in and around the eyelid. Nice little inside low kick from the champion. Tutorelli, a veteran of 34 professional wins. 26 of those wins coming by way of finish, and 20 of those finishes coming in the very first round. He is one of the most highly credentialed athletes we have in Brave. Brave Nation, I don't know if you noticed it, but several seconds ago, both fighters were smiling at each other. In a playful way, they are having a fun day at the office. <laughs> nice little inside leg kick. Frequency of the shots a little bit better from Kubanich back. In on the single. Can switch to a high crotch. Didn't quite have it. Denied. Now completely denied, and you know what comes at me. Follows like rain after clouds. Yeah, if I'm in the corner of Kubanich back, I'm telling him to abandon the takedown attempts. He's doing some great work with the hands. Keep working those hands. And then he almost smothers his good work by trying to get that takedown. Has not been getting the better of the takedowns right here. Look at Bro trying an uppercut of his own. That's a great fighter mentality. You hit me with something, I'm going to hit you back better. Good stiff job again from Kubanich back. Changing his stances quite a bit here. Is that just to give his opponent different looks or to give himself different avenues from which to attack, Eric? Could be a little bit of both. I think right now they both expended in the first two rounds their normal fight games. Neither of them has gained a huge edge from it. So they're going to try a few different things. Nice shot over the top from Kubanichbek. Yeah, Kubanichbek was faking a single, reaching down for that leg, then came in with a an overhand shot. Seems to be a little errant bit. Nice shot from Tutoroli. Seems, yeah. Seems to be a little... Yo, wobbled him. A little errant bit of fabric, I think, there on the, the hand of... The champ gave it a smile. Oh. He's hit behind the ear. He is wobbled. There's a button in human beings, and one of them's right behind the ear. That might be the first time I think I've seen Kuba Dijkbeck wobbled in the Brave Arena. Absolutely, positively the first time I've seen it. It only lasts five to 10 seconds, not like a body shot. Kubanichbek likely better now, but he's looking not quite like himself. Oh, it's another big shot. And he's smiling 
Imagine chinning somebody, thinking you've got them hurt, and you look up and they're just smiling back at you. Big shot landed to the cheek. Tuta Raoli perhaps slowly starting to change the momentum and flow of this fight, Kirik. Round three ends. Call it, Phil. Ah. I've got somebody in my mind. I want to see if we're in accord. I don't know about that, but I reckon we're going to be in agreement. What I saw there was some fantastic work, and they were very evenly matched uh, going up to in and around uh, 3 minutes 30 Agreed. of that round. But for me, with the shots landed, the fact that he wobbled Omar, I'm leaning towards Tuto Raoli in that round. I saw it the exact same way, and now, Brave Nation, we're going to get a look in slow motion of just what we were talking about. The two of them exchanged shots, but one of them had a staggering effect, and one of them didn't look at that. Both of them have to catch their balance a little bit. Both of them have a little smile. Yep, good shot, buddy. Yep, good shot, buddy. Hey, well done. Hold that. Look at that smile. Whole ton of mutual respect in here. Interestingly, though, the corner of Kuban Ichbek decided not to put him on the stool and instead have him on the canvas. Make They may think the legs are tired. If the head's closer to the legs, you're likely to get more blood there. They've got a whole different game that they play in Centra Central Asia, and it is proving to be pretty spectacular as Brave Nation, as you're seeing right here. Wire close right now between these two incredible combatants. Let's see if Tuta Raoli can continue to ebb away at that momentum that seems to be swinging in his favor. Brave Nation, we are now in the championship rounds, and the champion has eaten a couple of shots. Answered with a couple of knees of his own. Getting uppercut it a little bit. Somebody's mouthpiece went flying out. The gum scene went, but... You have to give credit. That's good for Momok. I enjoyed that. Because what you have to do, in accordance with the rules of MMA, the referee waits for a natural break. But what I like is though, Omar took a step back, said, get, get your gun piece so I can punch, or your mouth piece so I can punch in the mouth. I've barely seen that. He created his own natural break. That's a nice uppercut again from Kuban Ichbek. Now he's going to try and break those teeth. <laughs> <laughs> nice little three piece, didn't really land as clean as he would have liked. Takedown attempted, takedown denied. Tuto Raoli effortlessly getting rid of that. I'd like to see Kubanichbek kick a little bit more. He's not having all the success I think he needs with hands alone. Oh! Beautiful shot over the top. Yeah, that one went ding. Tuta Raoli doing an incredible job here. Step and elbow attempt. Do you know what? Omok is an incredibly well-conditioned athlete, but I genuinely believe that the heat inside that cage is starting to be a real factor. Maybe Kirk. melting him. I think he needs to move just a little bit more than he has been. When he sets down on those heels and waits, inevitably a shot to the head comes, and that's only going to make him less mobile. Got to see him move in and out just a little bit more, side to side a little bit more. If those feet don't move, he's got to bob and weave and slip, maybe fade a little bit, but that head's got to move. If it doesn't, those hands are gonna land. Got a quick timeout, may have been an accidental eye poke. Chance we'll get a look at it on the replay. Tutoroli, I think indicating that he's okay, he wants to keep fighting. We'll just see this Aaron top. To be fair, both fighters had their hands spread. <laughs> so, hey, it's an occupational hazard when you're wearing MMA gloves. Yeah. Part of the sport. Both these fighters being dragged to the deep waters of the championship rounds. Nice little switch kick from the champion. As I said earlier, I'd like to see him kick a little bit more. There he is. That one, I believe, got checked with a shin. Champ may want to try the outside of that calf for good measure. Beautiful nice little, little slip. slip. Oh, yep. That was really nice. Kuban Ichbek trying the attack, the body. This is so finely balanced, Kirik. So far, I can't really separate them in this round. I'm seeing just a slight striking edge for the challenger, but it is ever so slight. Just as you say that, he lands a shot over the top. 
shot got a grin and a nod. Nothing but respect in here for each His other. Boxing is so, so clean. And like you say, completely negating any kind of perceived reach disadvantage. Again, nice work from the challenger. Petroli still moving that head side to side, forward and back, up and down at all times. If he gets hit, like he got tagged there, it's almost by accident because that head is moving quite a bit. There's Omak starting to move again. Whoa! Hey, spinning back fist. Didn't quite land as flush as he wanted. Had it. We'd just be screaming right now. Tutaroli maybe looking to answer that potential highlight move with one of his own. He is that tired. Came in with a nice left. Just clips the jaw of the champ. Good step shot from, Kou from Kuban each back. Starting to turn it up with a minute yeah. to go in the fourth round. He is. Short time now, Brave Nation. Under 30 seconds to go. Barely 20 seconds now. Tutroli, the fighter from Georgia, stalking. Stalking, leaping in behind shots, many of which land. Avoiding the challengers, largely avoiding the leak. And there you saw it. Nice clean jab to the face. Another spinning elbow attempt. Another highlight reel hey. attempt, followed up by a knee. This round is so close. One big shot, I believe, could take the round. You almost feel like whoever is the last guy to land in this round takes it. Wow. Nice, deep, respectful handshake. Can you even guess, Phil, at who the judges liked in that round? Do you know what? If, if it were, it would be guesswork because that is such a finely poised round. For my money, I feel that Tutorauli was the one who did a little bit more in that. Yes, there was the spinning back fist attempt from Omog. There was the flying knee, but frequency, accuracy, damage accumulated and accrued. I'm leaning towards the challenger. I think he might have been, but I do like the old rule, and it comes from boxing, comes from prize fighting. You got to take the belt from the champion definitively. So for that reason, not necessarily based on what I saw in the round, I'm going to call that one 10-9 for Abdi Salam, Ulu Kubanich back, and that means, if I'm right, which I may well not be, <laughs> but it is entirely possible that going into the fifth and final round, whoever wins the fifth, the second championship round, the fifth round, whoever wins that, wins the belt, wins the fight. A fight that is this finely poised. Neither of these guys is going to want to go to the judges when it's this finely poised. I think we're going to see renewed impetus from both fighters to go and get it done in this fifth and final round. Here's the problem, though, Brave Nation. When you set down on a shot, when you sink your feet down, get all your weight behind a shot, it leaves you open to a counter. Both of these fighters are fatigued due to the heat, due to being in the final championship round. They're gonna set down and throw a shot at some point, but it can't be every shot. Be interesting to see if Kubanichbek even tries to get a takedown anymore. Has not had any luck except for off the cage. I don't think he's going to. Kirik, yeah. you know, the most proactive we've seen him in this fight is when he has boxed. You know, when he's trying to shoot for those takedowns and uh, he's expelling a lot of energy, right now he's looking good with the hands, so keep doing the things that are working for you. Kubanichbek doing a nice job of distance management here. That's a solid shot. Another solid shot from the champ. Kubanichbek cannot step inside and stay there. It's just not going to go his way. There he goes. Now he's moving out. If you see him move in, land a shot and see. Yeah, there he goes. He's trying to move out again. Like I say, with a fight this close, I don't think either fighter is going to want to leave it in the hands of the judges. Kubanichbek, to my eye, is trying to land the harder shots. Tried to clinch a knee, tried to land that spinning hammer fist. He's setting down on those jabs quite a bit. He's definitely upped his frequency of shots. Nice little sneaky lead hook there from Raul. It was nice. Champ was moving away from it, took the sting, much of the sting off it. 
Kubanichbek getting a little bit too close. That's going to be the result every time. Oh, that's a good shot. Oh, even better shot from the champ. There's a reason, Brave Nation, that these are called championship rounds. These bring out a heart that only a world champion can possess. Any normal human being under this pressure would be in the hospital. Approaching the midway point of the fifth and final round. Kuban Ichbeg looking good so far in this round. He's probably landed the most definitive shots. Kuban Ichbeg, in my mind, unquestionably ahead on the scorecard at the exact halfway point in this, the fifth and final round. Another good stiff job from the champ. Trying to break the curse of the Brave Combat Federation lightweight champ title. Never been defended. I said I didn't believe in curses, but I'm gonna have to wait for the outcome of this one. <laughs> Kubanich Beck is completely focused. Tuta Rauli trying to get in on a take down here. Not successful low far thus far. Has the hands connected? Take down in stages. Excellent job from the champion. Took a lot of energy to get in on those hips. Attempt to get the takedown. A little bit less to defend it. They're close. They're real close to each other now. Beautiful job from Tuto Rauli. That's what he needs to do more of if he wants to take this round. So impressive to see this blinding speed in the fifth and final round. So far, these gentlemen have been fighting for 24 minutes in crippling heat. Less than a minute, Brave Nation. Will we see a grandstand finish? Before the fight even started, Kubinichbek walked into the center, pointed down, this is my ground. Feel free to fight right here. Kubinichbek may have been trying to land an elbow there. Another spin and back fist attempt, 30 seconds to go. Who wants it more? Jumping Trying the in. attempt. Kubinichbek showing a champion's heart, showing a champion's conditioning in this round. He's pulled his entire game together. <laughs> 10 seconds to go in what has been an absolute war of attrition, Kirik, for the third time in his Brave Combat Federation career. Abdi Salam Ulu Kubanichbek goes the full five rounds. Brave Nation, I've got that 48 to 47 for the champion. A split decision would not surprise me. 48 47 to the challenger would not surprise me. What you're witnessing right here is one of the most difficult moments in sports. Julie, tell us what it's like when you're not sure who won the fight and you're waiting for that judge's decision to come out. It's a horrible moment. You even check what corner color you are on your wrist sometimes. It is heart beating moment. I mean, it's just so close, isn't it? It's... Oh, I, I... He's very happy with his performance. He thinks he's got it. But it's down to the judges' scorecards. I can say the exact same thing about Kubanichbek also holding his national flag up, gesturing to the crowd. Each fighter believes he won, and we're gonna get a look at some of the highlights. They went back and forth and back and forth beyond description. What you're gonna see here, Brave Nation, is shots going back and forth and back and forth. So close, you'd have to be a mathematician to tell if it was uh, 101 or 99. 100%, 100%. Great work, work rate from both fighters. 
I think the one thing that impressed me the most from the champion was in the fifth and final round. He dug way down, found those reserves, and in my opinion, absolutely, positively won. But that moment right there sums up the fight. They punched each other in the head at the exact same time. Both of them staggered momentarily, then both of them smile at each other and <laughs> touch hands. Say, so, yeah, this is awesome. Appreciated each other's work. Lots of grins in here, nice spinning. Hammer fist attempt. If that one lands wrong, it misses. It can land wrong, you can get a broken forearm. It can land wrong and you can get wrong and you can get knocked out. It is a dangerous technique to throw. And he threw it four times. That one was a miss and there they are. Brothers in arms, literally in the center of the Brave Combat Federation cage. They're being, Brave Nation, they're being gathered to center and we're just about to find out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, after five rounds of championship action, we go to your judges' scorecards. Your judges scored the bite. 48, 47, 49, 46, and 49, 46, in favor of your winner by unanimous decision, fighting out of the red corner and still Brave Combat Federation undisputed lightweight champion of the world, Abdi Salam Ulu Omar Kuban each having retained his belt and broken the Brave Combat Federation curse for the very first time.